camel is a different animal. A camel is an even toed ungulate in the genus Camelus that bears distinctive fatty deposits known as humps on its back. Camels have long been domesticated and, as livestock, they provide food and textiles. Camels are working animals especially suited to their desert habitat and are a vital means of transport for passengers and cargo. There are three surviving species of camel. The one hump dromedary makes up 94% of the world's camel population, and the two hump Bactrian camel makes up 6%. The wild Bactrian camel is a separate species and is now critically endangered. The word camel is also used informally in a wider sense, where the more correct term is camelid, to include all seven species of the family Camelidae. The true camels, along with the New World camelids, the llama, the alpaca, the guanaco, and the vicunia, which belong to the separate tribe Lamini. Camelids originated in North America during the Eocene, with the ancestor of modern camels, Perecamelus, migrating across the Bering Land Bridge into Asia during the late Miocene, around 6 million years ago. The average life expectancy of a camel is 40 to 50 years. A full-grown adult dromedary camel stands 1.85 meters at the shoulder and 2.15 meters at the hump. Bactrian camels can be a foot taller. Camels can run at up to 65 km h in short bursts and sustain speeds of up to 40 km h. Bactrian camels weigh 300 to 1000 kg and dromedaries 300 to 600 kg. The widening toes on a camel's hoof provide supplemental grip for varying soil settlements. The male dromedary camel has an organ called a dulla in its throat, a large, inflatable sac that extrudes from its mouth when in rut to assert dominance and attract females. It resembles a long, swollen, pink tongue hanging out of the side of the camel's mouth. Camels mate by having both male and female sitting on the ground, with the male mounting from behind. The male usually ejaculates three or four times within a single mating session. Camelids are the only ungulates to mate in a sitting position. Camels do not directly store water in their humps. They are reservoirs of fatty tissue. When this tissue is metabolized, it yields more than one gram of water for every gram of fat processed. This fat metabolization, while releasing energy, causes water to evaporate from the lungs during respiration. Overall, there is a net decrease in water. Camels have a series of physiological adaptations that allow them to withstand long periods of time without any external source of water. The dromedary camel can drink as seldom as once every 10 days even under very hot conditions, and can lose up to 30% of its body mass due to dehydration. Unlike other mammals, Camel's red blood cells are oval rather than circular in shape. This facilitates the flow of red blood cells during dehydration and makes them better at withstanding high osmotic variation without rupturing when drinking large amounts of water. A 600 kg camel can drink 200 L of water in 3 minutes. Camels are able to withstand changes in body temperature and water consumption that would kill most other mammals. Their temperature ranges from 34 degrees Celsius at dawn and steadily increases to 40 degrees Celsius by sunset, before they cool off at night again. In general, to compare between camels and the other livestock, camels lose only 1.3 liters of fluid intake every day while the other livestock lose 20 to 40 liters per day. Maintaining the brain temperature within certain limits is critical for animals. To assist this, Camels have erythemurable, a complex of arteries and veins lying very close to each other which utilizes counter-current blood flow to cool blood flowing to the brain. Camels rarely sweat, even when ambient temperatures reach 49 degrees Celsius. Any sweat that does occur evaporates at the skin level rather than at the surface of their coat.
the heat of vaporization therefore comes from body heat rather than ambient heat. Camels can withstand losing 25% of their body weight in water, whereas most other mammals can withstand only about 12-14% dehydration before cardiac failure results from circulatory disturbance. When the camel exhales, water vapor becomes trapped in their nostrils and is reabsorbed into the body as a means to conserve water. Camels eating green herbage can ingest sufficient moisture in milder conditions to maintain their body's hydrated state without the need for drinking. The camel's thick coat insulates it from the intense heat radiated from desert sand. A shorn camel must sweat 50% more to avoid overheating. During the summer the coat becomes lighter in color, reflecting light as well as helping avoid sunburn. The camel's long legs help by keeping its body farther from the ground, which can heat up to 70 degrees Celsius. Dromedaries have a pad of thick tissue over the sternum called the pedestal. When the animal lies down in a sternal recumbent position, the pedestal raises the body from the hot surface and allows cooling air to pass under the body. Camel's mouths have a thick leathery lining, allowing them to chew thorny desert plants. Long eyelashes and ear hairs, together with nostrils that can close, form a barrier against sand. If sand gets lodged in their eyes, they can dislodge it using their translucent third eyelid. The camel's gait and widened feet help them move without sinking into the sand. The kidneys and intestines of a camel are very efficient at reabsorbing water. Camel's kidneys have a 1, for cortex to medulla ratio. Thus, the medullary part of a camel's kidney occupies twice as much area as a cow's kidney. Secondly, renal corpuscles have a smaller diameter, which reduces surface area for filtration. These two major anatomical characteristics enable camels to conserve water and limit the volume of urine in extreme desert conditions. Camel urine comes out as a thick syrup, and camel feces are so dry. Killer data, the wild Bactrian camel, C. Ferris, separated from the domestic Bactrian camel, C. Bactrianus, about 1 million years ago. New World and Old World camelids diverged about 11 million years ago. In spite of this, these species can hybridize and produce viable offspring. The Kama is a camel llama hybrid bred by scientists to see how closely related the parent species are. Scientists collected semen from a camel via an artificial vagina and inseminated a llama after stimulating ovulation with gonadotrophin injections. The kama is halfway in size between a camel and a llama and lacks a hump. It is ears intermediate between those of camels and llamas, longer legs than the llama, and partially cloven hooves. Like the mule, kamas are sterile, despite both parents having the same number of chromosomes. When humans first domesticated camels is disputed. Dromedaries may have first been domesticated by humans in Somalia or South Arabia sometime during the 3rd millennium BC, the Bactrian in Central Asia around 2500 BC. As a chair I sucked to, Iran. Martin Hyde's 2010 work on the domestication of the camel tentatively concludes that humans had domesticated the Bactrian camel by at least the middle of the 3rd millennium somewhere east of the Zagros Mountains, with the practice then moving into Mesopotamia. Hyatt suggests that mentions of camels in the patriarchal narratives may refer, at least in some places, to the Bactrian camel, while noting that the camel is not mentioned in relationship to Canaan. Hyde and Joris Peters reasserted that conclusion in their 2021 study on the subject. In 2009 to 2013, excavations in the Timna Valley by Lidar Saperhen and Erez Ben Yosef discovered what may be the earliest domestic camel bones yet found in Israel or even outside the Arabian Peninsula. Dating to around 930 BC this garnered considerable media coverage, as it is strong evidence that the stories of Abraham, Jacob, Esau, and Joseph were written after this time. The existence of camels in Mesopotamia, 
but not in the eastern Mediterranean lands, is not a new idea. The historian Richard Bulliot did not think that the occasional mention of camels in the Bible meant that the domestic camels were common in the Holy Land at that time. The archaeologist William F. Albright, writing even earlier, saw camels in the Bible as an anachronism. Desert tribes and Mongolian nomads used camel hair for tents, yurts, clothing, bedding and accessories. Camels have outer guard hairs and soft inner down, and the fibers are sorted by color and age of the animal. The guard hairs can be felted for use as waterproof coats for the herdsmen, while the softer hair is used for premium goods. The fiber can be spun for use in weaving or made into yarns for hand knitting or crochet. Pure camel hair is recorded as being used for western garments from the 17th century onwards, and from the 19th century a mixture of wool and camel hair was used. By at least 1200 BC the first camel saddles had appeared, and Bactrian camels could be ridden. The first saddle was positioned to the back of the camel, and control of the Bactrian camel was exercised by means of a stick. However, between 500 and 100 BC, Bactrian camels came into military use. New saddles, which were inflexible and bent, were put over the humps and divided the rider's weight over the animal. In the 7th century BC the military Arabian saddle evolved, which again improved the saddle design slightly. Military forces have used the camel cavalries in wars throughout Africa, the Middle East, and into the modern-day border security force of India, though as of July 2012, the BSF planned the replacement of camels with ATVs. The first documented use of camel cavalries occurred in the Battle of Karkar in 853 BC. Armies have also used camels as freight animals instead of horses and mules. The East Roman Empire used auxiliary forces known as Dromedarii, whom the Romans recruited in desert provinces. The camels were used mostly in combat because of their ability to scare off horses at close range. A quality famously employed by the Achaemenid Persians when fighting Lydia in the Battle of Thymber. Camel milk is a staple food of desert nomad tribes and is sometimes considered a meal itself. A nomad can live on only camel milk for almost a month. Camel milk can readily be made into yogurt, but can only be made into butter if it is soured first, churned, and a clarifying agent is then added. Until recently. Camel milk could not be made into camel cheese, because rennet was unable to coagulate the milk proteins to allow the collection of curds. Developing less wasteful uses of the milk, DFAO commissioned Professor J.P. Ramit of the École Nationale Supérieure d'Agronomie et d'Industries Alimentaires, who was able to produce curdling by the addition of calcium phosphate and vegetable rennet in the 1990s. The cheese produced from this process has low levels of cholesterol and is easy to digest, even for the lactose intolerant. Camel milk can also be made into ice cream. Camel meat has been eaten for centuries. It has been recorded by ancient Greek writers as an available dish at banquets in ancient Persia, usually roasted whole. The Roman Emperor Heliogabalus enjoyed a camel's heel. Camel meat is mainly eaten in certain regions, including Eritrea, Somalia, Djibouti, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Syria, Libya, Sudan, Ethiopia, Kazakhstan, and other arid regions where alternative forms of protein may be limited or where camel meat has had a long cultural history. Camel blood is also consumable, as is the case among pastoralists in northern Kenya, where camel blood is drunk with milk and acts as a key source of iron, vitamin D, salts and minerals.